water. Two Saturdays ago, we descended deep into a valley blank with fog, white and damp in the middle of summer. I had not seen you in years. Your eyes were strangely unfocused, blue vacant earliest morning. We took our seats. The teachers smiled generously. We were going to practice transforming anxiety and depression now. We were going to follow our breath, the humid space beneath the nose, the belly rising, practice noting, the pain under the atrophied wing muscles in our backs, all the stories crowding each other for space, each thought tipping the lever, ball runs down the obstacle course of mind, feeling arises, body demands that we run or scream, we hold on to the life raft of a black cushion, try not to believe those thoughts again, try to keep some choices. You tried. You sat in an uncomfortable chair, very still, as monks who have spent many silent years can do. Then you raised your hand, face empty like a small child. What if, what if you can't feel your breath at all anymore? What if you can't feel anything? You struck me as transparent then a 46-year-old man made of rice paper and frozen wind. Later, the sun burned through the trees. We walked outside, smelled lavender blooming, picked wild plums. Inside, the teachers gave us small blank sheets. This is your antidepressant activity prescription capsule. We congregated in groups of three to write down the things we could do to feel better. You were in my group. After 10 minutes, my page was full of music, dancing, food, gardens, writing, sex, breath, and cold water. Your page was white. You could not remember a single thing to share. Cold water, you asked, your forehead twisted and vague. I told you a story about taking off all my clothes under a waterfall and the way the stagnation was pounded out of my body eight summers ago. I showed you the tattoo on my arm, rocks, creeks, sky, falls, reflection. It's so you remember what it feels like to be alive. You nodded, thoughtful. Would a cold shower work? I nodded, that could help. You wrote it down with a wobbly hand. Cold water, showers, go outside. At the end of the weekend, I wished you luck finding the next chapter of your life. You were unemployed. You might be moving in with your family. Everything was unknown. On Friday, they found your body in your bedroom at the San Francisco Zen Center. The monks accompanied you downstairs, chanted the Enme Juku Kanangyo for the protection of all life over and over as your body made its way to an ambulance. A few days later, I found out on Facebook the grief in the air at city center is palpable, a friend said a link to a blog post about the ways you would laugh, about the poem you once wrote, and how sometimes hearts just give out. After the tears and the shaking, go outside. I harvested all the garlic in my yard, buzzing, shocked, slow, and patient, marveling at what still grows. Manual labor can settle the soul. I learned and relearned this dirt fact at those temples. I too lived at Tassajara, Green Gulch City Center. Swept floors, hosed mats, emptied trash, chopped so many vegetables. Sat long periods of silence getting to know what was broken and what remained. It brought me peace until it did not. One day I got the job of combing the ashes in the incense box. The fine gray sand and smell of it reminded me instantly of the aftermath. My mother's death by gangrene, a year of panic and nightmares, flashbacks too big for the container of Zazen. Sometimes we cannot find our breath to follow. Sometimes the best thing is no longer to sit still. After I laid the garlic out to dry, I wished I could bring you with me in the newly repaired truck through outrageous sunlight to pick up paintings and the luminous reminders of why we are here. I wished I had told you I too was suicidal once in those small rooms at city center. I too was crushed when I realized that sitting very still was not enough to save my life. I left to learn how to move back into my body, how to love, make a living, find a home. You were facing the same steep hill. You 
opted out. Now your memory rides with me through Oakland. I bring you to my beloved's house. She is at work. Suddenly, I find myself enamored by the simplest expiring sunflower. All the bits of broken mirror and torn magazine scattered across her table waiting to become art. I don't care anymore if we succeed. It doesn't matter if we are great. It matters that we remember that series of rocks in the middle of the creek, her body arched across nowhere, shining for one afternoon. This, too, is real. I let it live inside my guts with all the nausea and the relief. I leave a bag of dirty clothes, a scrap paper with the outline, one small heart. I wish you had someone to draw your own heart for. Cold water runs all down my spine.